some of your time tonight, sir. <laughs> Ellie, right. shut up. Does anybody expect uh, this thing to pass, or is the point of it uh, that it should fail and Republicans then get to campaign on the Democrats having defeated it? Yeah, I don't think Republicans are expecting much. I mean, they're really clinging on to this notion of war on religion and running with it. They, you know, I think for a while have gotten used to just opposing anything the president supports. So when he made this modification, not only did they move to the right, they kind of just fell off the page with this thing. And, and what, are, what does the GOP see uh, in the playing field right now that even provides some sort of rationalization for proceeding with this now? Well, the rationale for them is war and religion, and that's the yeah. narrative they've been using from the very beginning. And, you know, it seems like it, it's unclear if Republicans read it. It's hard to believe that it would support such an expansive uh, such an expansive piece of legislation after they've been running around the country telling the government's going to get in between you and your doctor here. They're literally putting the boss in the doctor's office, yet they seem okay with it. The, uh, the availability of contraception, is it such, uh, in a matter of speaking, obviously it's not necessarily, in some cases it's law, but I mean, I'm going to talk about the overall cultural acceptance of this. Uh, is it such settled law or uh, theoretical law that, that there's a greater risk of alienating moderates simply by bringing this topic up? Well, I think so. You know, Republicans, since uh, health reform became law, really got into this habit of taking every single regulation and opposing it and twisting it and whipping up opposition to the law. But this isn't some bureaucratic change, some kind of medical loss ratio about what insurers have to do or don't have to do. In this provision, I think they really kind of met their match. And the more Americans learn this is about contraception, contraceptive coverage, I think the more they not only like this provision, as you quoted in the poll, but kind of begin to rethink the, the health care law as a whole and say, wait a sec, when we learn about this thing that you can get contraception without additional co-payments, uh, the more we like it. So this might be actually a very interesting and telling time in the overall uh, health care debate. So what do the Democrats do about this? Have they framed their opposition to this legislation correctly, or do they just stand back and wait for the Republicans to blow themselves up again? Well, you know, it's really great to see Democrats on the offensive with this. Uh, they, uh, when, once the president announced this accommodation, and I think a lot of the Catholic groups accepted the provision, uh, it really kind of created a great opening for Democrats, for Democratic women, uh, to paint the Republicans as opposing not only women's health care, as this law clearly does, but really just moving the goalposts all together and saying that an employer uh, can deny coverage based on whether or not he likes gay people for HIV coverage, whether or not uh, he believes in interracial relationships, just on anything. And that's not only, I think, going to scare a lot of moderates away, but also conservatives who are, you know, pretend to be, I think many say, are, are small government people. And it, once, they, once they learn what this says, I don't think they're even going to stand by it. The extraordinary number in that New York Times poll that said that 61% of the religious yeah. say that religiously affiliated employers should cover the cost, as opposed to 66% supporting the president's plan on this, does that suggest that the number of people who think that that something like this is an appropriate step that to, to give the, the employer complete control over what they pay for and what they don't is 5% <laughs> subtracting the one from the other? Yeah, it's, it's very small. I mean, the fact of the matter is, you know, Republicans in the beginning made this about Catholic colleges and universities, even though a lot of the Catholic colleges and universities already offer contraception. Some even offered it before there was any kind of federal mandate or state mandate. I mean, this is so accepted in American culture that you have some 98% of Catholics uh, taking contraception. You, you don't see, I think, Catholic families of seven, eight, or more anymore, and there's a reason for that. Igor Volsky, healthcare and LGBT editor for Think Progress. Thanks again for some of your time tonight. Thanks, Keith. The problem with a political Yay! party proposing something like this, something re